YouTubers and gamers, what's going on, guys? And welcome back to Messiah Entertainment. And today, I'm giving you guys my top 10 list of best movies of 2014. This isn't the highest rated movies. This isn't the biggest box office numbers. This is my own personal list. So if you don't like it, game with you. You know, people say that actors lie for a living. But the interview. This is living a lie. Okay, Rob, when you're ready. Get ready, camera two. Oh, oh. Jesus, fuck. Whoa. His head looks like somebody's taint. Thing. God, North Korea didn't get its grubby little hands all over this movie. This had me and my friends cracking up from beginning to end. James Franco and Seth Rogen together again. This is this was probably one of the most hilarious films of the year, in my opinion. After being shrouded in so much controversy and stuff, I wasn't even sure if we were going to be able to see it. I had the opportunity to catch it on the computer, and I got to say, I was very pleased and you know it ended up being on my top 10 list i can't even believe they threatened to blow people up over this movie i mean like it really wasn't even that big of a deal maybe one or two scenes you know where you know he kind of died or whatever but that, you know it really wasn't that big it, was, it really wasn't even that serious you know what i mean uh definitely go check this out if you get the chance this was an excellent movie What I am about to tell you sounds crazy, but you have to listen to me. Edge of tomorrow. Your very lives depend on it. This is not the end. Okay, so honestly, Edge of Tomorrow kind of came out of left field. I didn't see that movie coming. I mean, up until the day I saw it, I didn't really know what the plot was about. So, you know, I kind of went in there blind and I didn't really expect much from this movie. But when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is actually pretty cool to see him go through the day each and every time and then have to get it right, you know, get closer to getting it right each and every time. It was really interesting. I like the way that they did it. You know, uh, special effects were kind of cool, too. Um, they had like this whole battlefield in the beginning and that was that was pretty nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody in this movie was top-notch. Definitely something you should not sleep on. Definitely go check this out if you have not already. Uh, excellent film. Definitely an excellent film. Just remember all the good The Purge does. Okay, so when I originally saw The Purge last year, all I had to say was tons of wasted potential. There were so many places that movie could have gone, so many places in the city. You know, see how the chaos is breaking out amongst regular people. No, they confined it to a little tiny house with a, you know, little privileged, you know, nice little family. And, you know, after a while, it just became a slasher horror film with a bunch of psychopaths. You know what I'm saying? I mean... No, that did, to me it didn't work. It was, you know, there were so many places that movie could have gone, so many things that movie could have done, and it just seemed like a wasted opportunity. This time around, they gave us exactly what we were hoping for the original time. They, the movie's called The Purge Anarchy for a reason. There's anarchy going on the streets, and it pretty much shows you that. It shows you how society pretty much breaks down for, like, what, 12 hours a day? You know, the movie showed what average people do, you know, when they can't afford big fancy security systems and when they're really in the thick of everything that's go of all the madness, pretty much. And, you know, that was a lot more interesting than the last one. You know, this is definitely an, ex an excellent film. Definitely recommend going and seeing it. Uh, it's not even just a slasher horror film anymore. It, you know, they gave a little hint of, you know, revolution and resistance at the very end where these guys bust in the room to save the, you know, the, the, the protagonist. And, you know, they're like, you know, we're ending the purge. That just leaves so many possibilities for the third one. I just cannot wait to see what happens in the next one. I'm, you know, this one leaves me anticipating the next one. That's a good sign. You know what I'm saying? So definitely go check this movie out if you haven't already.
Let me just say this. This is on my top 10 list, so obviously I thought it was one of the better films of 2014. However, I can't say it's the best movie in the entire franchise. Like, this might be one of the weakest installments I've ever seen. I mean, this one had way too many villains again. Some of them were just thrown away. There were some characters that were just put in there to tease future things, and I was like, no, that, that, that didn't work. You know, there was just so much going on in this movie, and, you know, don't get me wrong, like, I don't want to bag on it. I mean, it, it was a great film, and, you know, it was, it was totally awesome watching the whole thing uh, go on in front of my eyes, but, you know, there, there were some problems, and, you know, I just kind of hope they don't keep on doing this. But again, I mean, Andrew Garfield was great in this movie. Emma Stone was great in this movie, too. Too bad we won't be seeing too much of her anymore. But, you know, everybody was awesome in this movie. Jamie Foxx was really cool. You know, they're, they, you know, we got the Sinister Six coming up next. Uh, I just can't wait to see what happens next. Walking J Part 1, I really wanted to put this a little bit higher on my list of favorite movies this year, but I just couldn't. I mean, overall, I really felt like this movie was just sort of a build-up to the, to the next film. You know what I mean? I, I'm wondering how much content is inside of Mockingjay Part 2 because if not, if there's not that much and it's really just a big action fest, they really could have just spliced those two films together, taken out some unnecessary scenes here and there, and, you know, you would have been fine with just Mockingjay the movie. But, you know, you know, I mean, they always split these big book adaptation, you know, franchises into two movies, makes them more money and stuff. But, you know, whatever, I mean... I'm looking forward to the next one. You know, the next one's going like is where stuff really hits the fan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the the districts are rising up against the capital, and Katniss is gonna have to fight in this big, huge, epic battle at the end. And you know, I'm guessing some people are gonna have to kick the bucket and stuff. But you know, I'm definitely looking forward to this next one. It was good enough to definitely put it on my best list. So you know, definitely still check this movie out. Still very enjoyable. You know, gets gets you riled up for the next movie. <laughs> Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Apes! Do not want war! Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I mean, the CGI in this was amazing. The storyline was engaging and it kept me on my toes. At this point, you know, everybody thinks that they know what's going to happen in Planet of the Apes. And, you know, it's going to be like the classic storyline. That's not the case at all in this movie. It kept me guessing, you know, it's not going in the direction that I thought it was going to head in. You know, until the end, I guess, maybe, uh, you know, setting up for a future that, you know, we all kind of know is coming. But, you know, I mean, so far, you know, it's like everything's in so in question that, like, you don't know what's going to happen in Planet of the Apes 3. And, you know, I really like that, you know. Uh, you know, I'm really anticipating what this next one's going to bring about, you know, I mean, like everybody in the, in the third one, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to bring Caesar back, you know, he already was like pretty old in this one. So is he going to be like a, a grandfather in the next one? I mean, it, you know, I don't really know, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. Marvel's biggest smash hit of the year, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, man. I mean, I didn't know what to expect going into this except for greatness. Like, you could tell just walking into the theater, like, this was going to be Marvel's next biggest thing. And it truly was. I mean, Marvel took a risk. They took a, a you know, a movie based off a comic book that nobody really knew much about and you know they did something crazy with it which you know is really cool to know that they're taking little comic books here and there and they're making them in the movies instead of just sticking with you know thor and captain america and the hulk and the avengers and all the well-known characters you know they're going into some unknown territory and that's really cool because you know now they might be doing other smaller things that i would really want them to see the, the uh to explore in the movies you know i mean like 
we can maybe get a runaways movie that i've been dying for for the past few years they were gonna do something but then avengers was so good they were like all right let's put that on the back burner you know maybe with the success of Guardians of the galaxy you know we might get some other cool movies in there but you know i mean like only time will tell The Hobbit, Battle of the Five Armies. I mean, this movie, you know, was the final concluding chapter of the Hobbit series. Uh, it was a little heavy on the action, and I felt like one or two scenes could have been shifted from the beginning of this movie back onto the end of the last one. Uh, some of the CGI was a bit um, much in some places, to say the least, but like... For the most part, it was still a very enjoyable movie. You know, they took us back to Middle Earth. There were some really cool scenes, like, uh, that connected it to the original Lord of the Rings trilogy where they were fighting Sauron, and that was, like, the coolest thing ever. You know, I was having such a geek-out moment right there, and, you know, I was just, you know, losing my mind. But, you know, I mean, definitely a great one of the greatest movies of the year so far. Well, so far, it's the end of the year, but definitely one of the greatest movies of the year. You know, definitely go check it out if you haven't already, man. It was It was just amazing. Future. Do I make it? No. The X-Men days of future past. This movie has to be the best movie in the entire X-Men franchise. It's better than First Class. It is better than the first X-Men. It is better than X2. It is definitely better than X3 and X-Men or <laughs> Origins Wolverine. Uh, it's even better than the Wolverine. I mean, you know, all, you know... This was just amazing. This movie practically said, forget about the entire X-Men franchise that you've just seen, except for X-Men First Class. Forget everybody who had ever died. Forget everybody who, you know, was starring in a film that she didn't really like, like X-Men uh, <laughs> Origins uh, Wolverine. Eh. Uh, you know, forget about all that garbage. We're starting it brand new, and we're going to start going forward with a brand new series uh, with, you know, all your favorite heroes back and a younger cast as well. So, you know, you, you know, next next up is X-Men Apocalypse, and I can't wait for that to show up. Uh, you know, it's going to take place in the 80s with, uh, you know, the younger cast, the James McAvoy and the Michael Fassbender. So, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to this. And, you know, th this was honestly just an, such an amazing film. Definitely go check it out if you haven't already, which I don't know what you've been doing if you haven't checked this out already. This is like um, one of the most amazing movies of the entire year. Special effects was on point. Just definitely go check this movie out. Most of the intelligence community doesn't believe he exists. The ones that do call him the Winter Soldier. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. He's a ghost. You'll never find him. I joined S.H.I.E.L.D. to protect people. Captain, to build a better world, Sometimes means tearing the old one down. And that makes enemies. And finally, number one, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. This movie was still freaking amazing from beginning to finish, from Nick Fury to, you know, The Winter Soldier, to Captain America, to The Falcon, to Black Widow, to everybody involved in this movie. This was one of the most epic Marvel films to date, even better than uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which made it as number four. Like, this was just am and such an amazing movie. You know, I have to give it some props, man. Like... You know, if this is any, you know, Civil War is coming up for Captain America right after this. And I'm just, I'm psyched that, you know, I cannot wait to see more of Captain America. Action scenes and the Winter Soldier, they were just so good. You know, I, I just, you know, if you haven't watched this movie already, I don't know what you've been doing with your year, but you got to go check this out. And that's it, guys. That was my best list of movies for 2014. It's been an awesome year for movies. It's been awesome doing this channel. Uh, you know, but 2015 looks awesome too. I mean, we got Avengers Age of Ultron, which pretty much seals the deal for everything. We got Jurassic World, we got Ant-Man, we got uh, Fantastic Four coming out next year. And of course, we got the ruler, the Mac Daddy of all movies, the, uh, the, the, the king of all, 
all film franchises. Star Wars Episode Seven, The Force Awakens. So you know, you know what I'm saying. Like it's you know, it's, it's gonna be a crazy year next year. A lot of reviews coming out, and uh, you know, let me know in the comment section what you guys thought was the best movie of 2014. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, that was it, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. And have a happy new year.